Hi everyone, if you are not willing to hold a stock for 10 years, don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. This is a quote by legendary Warren Buffett and I'm going to justify that quote by showing you a simple method of selecting stocks that you can hold for 10 years which are likely to give you very high returns provided you stay invested for 10 years. Do not subscribe to my channel until you watch this video. After watching this video, if you think that you've learned something new, hit the subscribe button. With that, let's get this video started. As you can see on my screen, there are more than 4,500 listed stocks and by the end of this video, we'll find out the stocks that are going to give us solid returns for the next 10 years. First thing we are going to do is we are going to apply Nifty 500 filter. So we are only interested in the companies which are part of the top Nifty 500 uh, stocks. And secondly, we are going to look at only those stocks for which the market capitalization is more than 10,000 crore. So we are going to enter those two values here. 10,000 crores. The main reason of me putting these two filters is we are only interested in those companies which are likely to give us good returns at a reasonable risk. We are not interested in those companies which are going to give us extremely high returns but with extremely high risk. Please understand we do not want our capital to be lost. The first principle of investing is to protect your capital, get reasonable returns, good returns at a reasonable risk. Therefore, smaller companies we are not considering. We are only considering top 500 companies along with those companies which are having market capitalization of at least 10,000 crores. This gives us total 339 companies and out of these 339 companies, we are going to find out those companies which have been consistently fundamentally strong in the last five years. For that, let us put some more filters. The first one I'm going to use is revenue. So what is the five year historical revenue growth? And also I'm going to look at the net profit margin in the last five years. Let's add these two filters. Now you will notice that let us take an example of ITC here. You will see that in ITC last five years, average revenue growth has been 9.82%, less than 10%. But look at their net profit margin growth. It has been 26%. For me, the core fundamental signal that I want to catch on is the net profit margin. And I'm going to only consider those companies that have given me at least 10% or more net profit margin growth in the last five years. That gives us total 161 companies. Other than net profit margin, Another very important fundamentally strong signal that we need to catch is EPS, which is earnings per share. How much this company is earning per share, right? For that, what we are going to do, look at the EPS in the last five years. Simply go ahead and select five year historical EPS growth and you are likely to see the EPS growth coming here. And we are only going to consider those companies who have given us EPS growth of more than 10%. Let's go and filter that out. That gives us total 103 companies which are fundamentally strong. Consistently, they have given good fundamental returns in the last five years. Should we now invest our money into these companies? Well, absolutely not. What we are going to now look at is how much of return on equity these companies have given. So what I'm going to do is add another filter, which is five year average return on equity. And I'm only going to consider those companies that have given me at least 15% return on equity. Otherwise, I'm going to go and invest my money in debt instruments or in an index mutual fund. If I want to earn 10% or 11% return, I need minimum 15% return year on year. That's why I selected 15% and more. And that gives us 79 companies that have given return on equity more than 15% in the last five years. Now the natural question you will ask me, Rahul, what is the guarantee of these companies giving good return on equity in the future months or future years? Well, there is no guarantee and I cannot predict that they are going to give you really good returns, but there is a signal that we need to catch. And the signal is how much of dividend yield these companies have versus their sector. What I mean by that is these companies have been generating solid net profit margin in the last five years, 10% and more. Therefore, we need to check how much of that profit they are reinvesting back into the business to grow it in the future versus how much of dividend they are distributing as free to their shareholders. Now, giving di dividends is not a bad thing to do, but if it is done excessively, then what it tells is that the company is not keeping the reserve for the future growth. What they're doing is they are just keeping the shareholders happy right now. For that, what we are going to do is use a filter. Let us go ahead and add that. That filter is called dividend yield versus subsector, simply meaning what is the difference in the dividend yield of this company versus their sector dividend yield. So if a company which is, let us say, in the FMCG sector is giving 5% dividend yield, but the sector dividend yield is only 1% or 2%, that means this company is excessively giving dividends and we do not want to select that company, right? For that, we are going to take dividend yield versus subsector. 
and i will be happy if a uh, difference between the dividend yield and subsector is not more than 2% that means they are not giving more than 2% uh, dividend yield as compared to their subsector that gives us 68 companies which are distributing less dividend as compared to their subsector therefore they are investing more money into the future growth of the company therefore are likely to give us better returns so far if you are liking this video please hit the like button and now you subscribe to my youtube channel with that let us now find out the companies which are going to be more and more riskier for us therefore we need to eliminate the riskier companies from this list for that the first thing we are going to consider is beta let me explain to you and show it to you as well let us go ahead and add a filter called beta now what is beta beta tells you that what is the volatility of this company versus the overall market so if nifty let us say drop by 1% is this company going to drop by 5% or is this company going to only drop by 0.5% right 0.5% is always better right our risk is less there therefore we are going to add this filter here so we are going to add this filter and i am only going to select those companies which are giving me beta of less than 1.5% meaning these companies are less cyclic they are more stable we do not want to have companies like this we want companies that are going to give returns like this. some volatility is fine but not like this we want something which is more stable right for that we are going to select 1.5 as my maximum beta and i am going to add that here and we are going to get these 59 companies which are which are very stable companies even if the market falls they fall less the second parameter that we need to measure these companies for risk is how much of shares the promoters have pledged let me explain and show it to you as well so what we are going to do is add a filter here which is called pledged promoters holding what it simply means is how much of promoters stake they have pledged or given as a security against a loan now it is very bad if the promoters have given a lot of their stake as security to take loan to run the company so minimum this is better it is so what we are going to do is add this here and what we are going to do is i am going to consider only those companies which have got less than 5% of their promoter stakes pledged against a debt so we are going to put 5% here and that is going to give us almost the same list of companies because these are all good good companies where the promoters have not pledged their shares they have a good repo in the market so if they need a loan or debt they are going to get that easily they don't need the promoters to keep their shares as security to get the loan the third very important aspect around risk is how much of long term debt this company is carrying higher the long term debt the risk is very high for us company might shut down right let us consider those factors as well so what i'm going to do is look at the filter here and only add long term debt to equity please know that i'm not interested in the short term debt because short term debt is fine what we need to really look at the long term debt commitment that the company has and how much of portion of long term debt is versus their equity right for that we are going to select this filter and what you will notice here that for hdfc bank it is not showing us any value if i also come down here you will see that for the small finance bank it is not showing us value we do not want to filter out those companies for which there is no data here what i have done is i have created my own filter here using this tool so i am going to add my own filter which is called long term debt divided by total equity the data is there simply there was some calculation mistake so i have just corrected here and i have got long term debt to long term equity now if i arrange this list by higher long term debt to long term equity you will see that majority of the company after number 4 here they have less long term debt to total equity so for example here let us take britannia that has only 28% of their debt as part of the equity which is fine which is absolutely okay if you look at the top 3 companies here you will see for example rec limited having 6.46% of long term debt versus their equity meaning they have taken more than 6 times of equity as their long term debt but please do not worry because this is very sector specific let me prove it if you go back and look at the rec's balance sheet here you will see that the industry average is 700 more than 730% so in fact rec's debt versus equity is actually low so do not worry about that because it is in the finance sector or in the power sector because of the nature of the business the debt is going to be huge so we are very happy that these companies have less long term debt to equity ratio therefore i am not going to remove any of these companies because of this parameter so we have got a solid list of companies which have been really fundamentally strong in the last 5 years have given good return on equity in the last 5 years and also their beta is less meaning they are not cyclic in nature the risk around the promoter shares being pledged is not there their debt position is all looking good so are we satisfied to invest our money in these companies well no 
पिक्चर अभी बाकी है वॉट आई रियली वॉन्ट टू डू इज चेक वॉट इज द एनलिस्ट कम्युनिटी सेइंग अबाउट दीज कंपनीज राइट फॉर दैट वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज वी आर गोइंग टू एड अनादर फिल्टर कॉल्ड एज परसेंटेज बाय रिकमेंडेशन फ्रॉम एनालिस्ट राइट सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस एंड एड इट हियर वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज सेलेक्ट दोज कंपनीज वेर एटलीस्ट फिफ्टी परसेंट और मोर analysts are saying that these companies are good buy so let us go ahead and enter it here we are going to say give me only those companies where the percentage recommendation by the analyst is more than 50% meaning if there are 10 analysts looking at let us say hdfc bank at least more than 5 of them are saying it's a good buy right we are going to apply that here and we are going to get to 42 companies are we now ready to at least invest in these companies not yet because it's our hard earned money and what we want to make sure is that we are only buying those companies which are undervalued right now and we are going to use two important ratios for that the ratio number 1 is what is the pe ratio of the company versus the sector pe pe ratio simply means price to earning per share how much of market is willing to pay right now versus the sector pe as well so let's just go ahead and add that filter so we are going to come here and say pe sector PE minus sector PE. This is one that I have created on ticker tape. So let's go ahead and add that here. What we are now going to do is only consider those companies where the PE of that company is less than the sector PE, meaning that they are undervalued. Let us go ahead and do that. For that, what we are going to do is we are going to only consider those companies where this difference is less than zero, meaning the PE is less than the sector PE. It means this company is undervalued if we compare the PE of the company versus the sector PE. The last valuation ratio that we are going to use is price to intrinsic ratio. meaning we are only going to pick those stocks which are trading at a lower price than the intrinsic value intrinsic value simply means the core value or the fair value or the actual value of a share so let us go ahead and add that in here we are going to click on price to intrinsic value rank here what this rank simply means is that for example itc here if we rank all the stocks listed on the stock market 54% of the stocks that are there ITC is undervalued as compared to those 54% stocks right so what we are going to do is only filter those stocks which are at least 50% to higher in terms of their rank so it means these stocks are the top stocks which are undervalued they are so for example if you look at the if you arrange it in the order REC limited has got the perfect score of 100% meaning that this stock is right now the most undervalued stock if we compare price to intrinsic value rank here this gives us the total 12 companies which are best for long term investment let's go ahead and arrange them in the market capitalization order and there you go here is the top 12 companies that you can consider investing please do not go by what i am saying because i am not a sebi registered advisor do your thorough research on each company's business model and take your positions or bets according to your own research if you enjoyed this video please press the like button follow me for upcoming videos i will see you in my next video until then keep rocking